In fact, it didn't get any of that, did it? Oh, sorry, I've just had camera failure and it's like properly shocking weather. So I am in a cheery mood today, honest. We're just walking the dogs. Who's got his bottom sitting in a puddle? Mad animal. Uh, yeah, so picking up my coffee. Hello, Jazzy. Yeah, he's got the right idea. He's gone in in the warm. We have dogs, we can't do that. So um, yeah, just grabbing my early morning coffee to wake me up and then I'm going back home into the warm. I cannot wait for spring to start. I really can't. Oh, my fingers are cold. My brain is cold. And Albie's got his bottom in the mud now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's oh, got to be washed. Jeez. You've got to wash him. You've got to put the hose on him. Especially, yeah. it's, it's, it's getting all the way up his side now. <laughs> Not happy. Oh. My little dog goes in the sink and she's very good. And she just sits there, stands there until I wash her. And she knows you're talking about her. I know she does, yes. You do know, don't you really? You're yeah, licking your nose, hoping there's going to be some sausages coming your way. <laughs> <sighs> Dogs! <coughs> Albie, I won't have it. Come over here. Stupid dog, sorry. Albie, shh. You'll ask my subscribers if they know how to fix your barking, because that's just naughty behaviour, isn't it? Yes. You're fluffy but naughty and very muddy. Oh. But it's okay, because uh, my mum's going to stick you in the sink. She literally just said that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sure you said that. I'm sticking millions. Uh huh. It's okay. I'm gonna hose pipe him. He'll be fine. <laughs> Good. Here we go. Other side. Good. Good boy. Things I do for dogs. Okay. Let's get you in your bed for some food. Oh. Yeah. Right. Ah. Oh. This coffee is going to hopefully return me to normal operating for the day. Uh -oh. Hopefully. Okay, so now I'm in and I'm warm and I'm dry. Let's talk about the topic, the EV topic for today, which is basically, I think the roads might not be able to cope with EVs. So this is prompted by an article which I actually read originally in August last year and I've been meaning to talk about it and just hadn't kind of quite got round to it yet. Basically, in a nutshell, there's uh, the uh, an Institute of Think Tank, I think it's Tony Blair's Think Tank actually, has said that UK roads could be gridlocked in 20 years time because of EVs and also there'd be a 30 billion pound black hole in the public finances because they won't be paying vehicle excise duty. There's a few things here and I mean ultimately I do kind of agree with the conclusion that EVs are going to lead to more gridlock on the roads. Not necessarily because more people will think oh yes now I can afford a car which yeah, I don't, I mean, EVs are quite expensive and I think they're going to continue to be the more expensive option for a little while at least. But one of the things that I have noticed is, okay, so I used to do about 12, 12 and a half thousand miles a year in my previous uh, internal combustion engine vehicle, which admittedly was about 10 years ago now when I last had that. And I, it was a 306, a two litre Peugeot 306, you know, it was a perfectly reasonable car at the time. And then I moved to a, a Nissan Leaf. Almost immediately, I started doing 20, 25,000 miles a year. And basically, it's because the connection between miles driven and cost was not completely broken, but it was mostly broken. You just don't notice it. Because fundamentally, you're talking about the difference between paying £40 a month for electricity for transport and paying 60, 70, 80 pounds a month. Well, the difference between 40 and 80 is, it's not nothing, but it's a lot smaller than the difference between 200 and 400. I mean, that's a, you know, you have to budget for that. Whereas honestly, you know, most people can afford an extra 40 quid. If they can afford a car, an extra 40 quid is doable. If that means that they want, you know, can do journeys that they want to do. So I do think there's a real, danger that as more and more people drive EVs, more and more people are going to use them for going everywhere, including journeys they might not otherwise have done because they would have, you know, decided they were 
that, that the journey was cost prohibitive. So the solution, according to the think tank, is ultimately to move to a road pricing concept. And I think, I don't know for sure if we will actually ever go to a road pricing concept. I think it's a good idea in a lot of ways, but it does rely on a lot of extra technology. I think it's going to be quite tricky to do road pricing, honestly, because it's quite a technical solution that will probably end up relying on the you know technology that car manufacturers will have to build in. Now there is an alternative, I suppose, you could do a sort of number of miles driven per year type pricing. And I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. So when you go for your MOT, they'll check the odometer and you know the government will use that to calculate your vehicle tax bill for the year. I certainly think that would be a much more sensible idea than than just leaving it the way it is and just doing like a flat fee. Because the problem with flat fees is even if you make people with more expensive cars pay more, it doesn't matter if they drive 10 miles, 100 miles or 100,000 miles in a year. And because EVs are so cheap to drive on a per mile basis, a lot more people will end up doing 20,000, 30,000 miles a year. You know, and I'm not talking about professional taxi drivers or anything. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. There are technical sort of solutions that are going into cars, however, even sort of right at the moment. There's a, a new rule coming in, I think it's sort of middle of next year, actually, for cars that are designed after that. They're going to have to have a speed limiter software in there. It doesn't actually limit the speed. I think it just sort of gives you a uh, an audible warning as you approach the speed limit. That's actually a European thing, but for ease of car manufacturing, I believe the UK government has, has decided they're just going to sort of replicate that into our, into our laws as well, which is good. Um, it's great now that we've taken back control. It's, it's really nice because it obviously clearly just means that what Europe does, we follow. Hmm. Yeah, well, anyway, I'm sure we wouldn't have had it anything important to add anyway. Sorry, a little bit of Brexit bitterness coming through there. <laughs> Must be the weather. So yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. One thing's for sure, I don't think they're going to try and put the the tax into the fuel the way it is with petrol and diesel. Because people talk about sort of, you know, the, the vehicle excise duty and the fact that EVs don't pay that or don't pay as much for it. I, that's the big problem. It's not. That's not the big problem. That's nothing. That's not how the government affords to keep the roads in one piece. What, how they afford to keep the roads in one piece is through the insane quantity of tax that goes on to petrol and diesel for for private use. So you know, but you can't tax electricity in the same way because you can get electricity from like anywhere. The car doesn't care where it comes from. So how do you prove? where the electricity in that car came from and therefore calculate the appropriate tax. And if you tax all electricity as if it was petrol or diesel, then people that aren't you know, going on roads at all don't even own a car. They just want to keep the lights on in their house. They will also be paying for the repair of the roads. So, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a bit of a bit of a tricky waters to navigate there for the government. But I don't think they're going to have to do anything for you know, a while, despite the fact that uh, uh, in December, 26% of all new cars were EVs. So maybe they will have to do something with it sooner than I'm thinking. Anyway, I, uh, I really do need to set up some kind of proper studio. It's, it's one of the things that I'm, I kind of have to wait a little bit because my mum is building a house and then she's going to move out of here and then this will be my house if I can afford it. Uh, and at that point, I'll have plenty of room to actually set up a proper studio, which will make doing these bits of videos where I want to talk about a particular topic much easier. Hello, Jasper. Something I want to hear. He wants an app for his phone. Metroina. Robot Showdown. Robot Showdown. Yeah. Hmm. Let me have a look. I'm very sceptical of these pay to win games that you get on phones. Not good for small children's brains. Anyway, I, I'd also like to do a bit of a sort of an update on my various gadgets. I've got loads of fun gadgets these days. Unfortunately, I don't have any robots left. Uh, the robot mower and the robot vacuum cleaner both went to the wife in the divorce. So, and I think she sold them because she's only got a tiny lawn and 
likes doing the hoovering. I don't know. Either way, I missed the I missed the the inside the the vacuum cleaning robots a lot. I'm gonna have to get another one of those at some point when I get the money, because I think they're a good idea. Although this house is kind of being an old house is a lot of uneven floors, so I might have to go for that Dyson one that has the sort of the tracks instead of wheels. Might be a good idea. Let me know what you think. Uh, if any of you guys got the Dyson robot vacuum cleaner and is it a good purchase? Right, okay, I think that wraps up what I wanted to say. I, I don't know what the future, obviously, is, is going to hold in terms of paying for roads and EVs and, and preventing gridlock. I do think that we shouldn't just build more and more and more roads. I think that is a bit bonkers. I, obviously, a lot of journeys do have to be done with a car. But a lot of journeys can be done with bicycles or, you know, other things. I mean, OK, so this horrible weather does make me feel like it's got to be a car, surely. And obviously, if you need to take any children with you or pets or whatever, then it does become more difficult to use bicycles, although you can get trailers and cargo, you know, cargo bikes and stuff. So it's still possible-ish. But I kind of feel like there must be a missing a missing vehicle type somewhere something between an electric bike and a full-blown car like a sort of a really light electric vehicle a bit like that um, sort of weird space age looking cycle machine that I saw at the uh, at the LCV event in September that's the kind of thing I'm thinking something that will seat a few people maybe some kids some luggage it doesn't weigh very much it shouldn't be expensive to run, it shouldn't be expensive to buy because it defeats the purpose of it. Then you might as well go get a car. And I suppose it's governments that are going to hold the responsibility for allowing these novel sort of electric vehicles that are halfway between a car and a bicycle to sort of come to fruition because at the moment they're all basically banned on the basis that they have to be cars. And by the time you've turned it into a car, you've turned it into something that does weigh about a ton and it's so expensive but we do need something with a little bit of weather protection at least in this country that's uh that's where i'm gonna leave it for today hopefully um and then uh it's good so i've finally talked about this story that i wanted to talk about in august so what we're only like five months behind reality now we're getting there. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links are in the description. I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And I will see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.